everyone. In this series of videos, we're going to be talking about plant assets. And in this first video, we're going to look at the lump sum purchase. So to get into that concept, we really first need to introduce the cost principle again. So this should be like a review for you from your um, earlier accounting chapters and information. But remember the cost principle states that assets are recorded on the books at historical cost. So typically that's what we pay for an asset. But there can be a few other things that's involved with this idea of cost. So the cost of an asset is really the cost that are associated or necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use. That includes the, the cost to acquire the asset as well as any cost maybe to get it to you, so like freight in. Um, so anything that gets that asset ready to you and ready for its intended use would be included as the cost, the historical cost of that asset, and that's what it be, would be recorded on the books at. Okay, so let's look at this idea of recording a lump sum. So, um, for example, if you if you like the TV show Storage Wars or something like that, and these people go out and they buy these storage units that's packed full of all this stuff, and how do they record those items on their books, the stuff they decide to keep? How do they record that on their books? So let's look at how they would do that. So we're going to need to allocate the cost to all those different items. So here we have an example, Northwood Properties. They bought three lots and a subdivision for a lump sum price. They got an independent appraiser to come in and appraise each item. So the first lot was appraised at $50,000, the second lot was appraised at $60,000, and the third lot was appraised at $70,000. Northwood paid $150,000 $150, for all of this stuff together. We need to record the purchase in the journal, identifying each lot's cost in a separate land account. We're going to round decimals to three places, and we're going to use computed percentages throughout. Okay, so we have our appraised cost, which... When we add up the appraised cost of each one of those items, we come up with a total of $180,000. But we only paid $150,000 for them. So what we need to do is find out what is the percent of the value of each item to the total. So we're going to get a ratio. So what we're going to do is allocate the proportion of cost based on that fair market value that we had an appraisal done for. Okay, so the first one, Lot 1, it appraised at $50,000 out of a total appraisal of 180. So that would be its portion of the total cost. Lot 2 was appraised at 60,000 out of the total 180, and Lot 3 was appraised at 70 of the 180. So that's going to be its proportion of the total cost. Then we're going to multiply those percents by the cost that we paid for all three of these lots. And that's going to give our allocated cost for each one, which should add up to the total of $150,000 that we paid for each, for the entire bundle of lots. So lot one, two, and three together. So you can see that information here. Now once we have the allocated cost for each item that we purchased in the lump sum, we can then make our journal entry. So we're going to debit each lot or piece of land and credit our cash account for that amount. Okay, so now that we know how to do a lump sum purchase, let's introduce the concept of depreciation before we actually get into the different um, ways of depreciating assets. So depreciation is simply the process of spreading the cost of an asset over its useful life. And so we have different methods that we can use to, to calculate depreciation, but the reason we do depreciate assets instead of expensing everything in the year that we purchase the asset is because typically those assets are useful over many years, not just the year we purchase them. So this follows along with the matching principle. So keep in mind too that depreciation is not a valuation process. So it doesn't actually change the asset's value on the balance sheet. Remember assets are kept on the books at what we paid for them. We don't adjust their value based on fair market. Okay, so this, this, the use of depreciation methods matches the expense with the revenue that, created, that was created by the asset. So let's look at what the journal entry would be for depreciation. And it's actually an adjusting entry. So when, whenever we record depreciation, we're always going to debit depreciation expense and we're going to credit accumulated depreciation for whatever the particular asset is. So remember that depreciation expense is an operating expense 
and accumulated depreciation is actually a contra asset account. So the way this would look on the balance sheet, for example, is you would have your building at whatever you paid for that building, $120,000, and let's say we've depreciated it for a few years, and our total accumulated depreciation on the building at this point is $80,000. So we would have a book value, or a net value for our building, of $40,000. So we've talked about this before, but remember what that word net means. It simply means that something's been taken out. So in this case, depreciation has been taken out. So we have our net book or our net value for our building of $40,000 here. Now this is one way you could see it on a company's annual report. Another way would be just simply that one line building common net $40,000. If you see it in that format on a financial statement, you have to go into the notes to the financial statement to find out what the actual cost of the building was and the total accumulated depreciation at that point. And then that would tell you what those amounts are if you needed those for some reason. So now what if we sold this building, for example, and let's say we sold it for $50,000. What's the journal entry that we would need to make to record this sale of this building? Well, be very careful. You know it's on the books at $120,000, so the immediate thinking here is, well, I made $70,000, but you've used up this building. Okay, You've technically used it up over so many years, and you depreciated it $80,000. So the actual value of it is $40,000. Okay, so if we, if we say that we got $50,000 in cash, we need to take this building off the books and everything associated with the building, including its contra account. So remember, if there's a contra account associated with a, an, another account, wherever that building goes, that contra account has to go with it. So if the building is going away, the accumulated depreciation account associated with the building also has to go away. So let's look at that part of the journal entry first. So we got cash of $50,000. Accumulated depreciation is a contra asset that carries a credit balance. So to get it off the books, I would have to debit accumulated depreciation for the building. And the building carries a debit balance. To get it off the books, I would have to credit the building for that 120 that it's currently on the books at. So now I've gotten rid of the accumulated depreciation and the building, and I've got my cash. But if you look at this entry, we do not balance. So what do we have here? Well, the book value of the building was $40,000, and I actually got $50,000. So what we had here is a gain. We sold the building at a gain because we sold it at $10,000 more than what it's actually worth on our books of $40,000. So a gain acts like a revenue, so it's actually going to be a credit. And now if we look at our journal entry, it actually does balance. So what if we have the reverse of that? I want you to take a, a shot at this one. What if we sold the building for $30,000? What does that mean? So what would that journal entry look like? So follow the same process. Make sure your journal entry balances once you've created it. So push pause on your player, then come back and we'll take a look at it together. Okay, so what you should have come up with is you should have found that this is a sale at a loss. Okay, so we sold this one at $10,000 less than what it's worth on our books of $40,000. So we've got our cash debit of $30,000. We took the accumulated depreciation off the books. We took the building off the books. We don't balance. We need a debit of $10,000. Losses, remember, act like expenses. So you're going to debit any losses that you might have. Okay, so now we've looked at the gains, what they look like, and we looked at what a loss looks like. But when you're... Um, Whenever you sell an asset, always make sure that the depreciation is, is uh, current or it's up to date prior to recording the sale. So usually we only record depreciation at the end of the period or the end of the year. So if you're selling an asset somewhere in the middle of the year, then you've got to make sure you record the depreciation entry prior to making your sale. So that's very, very important. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and questions and comments are always welcome.